So in this video, I wanna talk about different types of efficiency, essentially different types of things to optimize around. So to begin, let's talk about turn efficiency. Turn efficiency is basically using your allotted turns as efficiently as possible, using your units in an optimal manner, trying to have each unit do something that contributes or using each unit optimally. So in this example, I'm going to do arguably not the most efficient turn one on this map, but a, a very efficient turn one. So I teleport in, so I grab space immediately. I put a dude at low HP. Now, if he hits me, if he hits Saline, she actually will kill herself because of her passive, which is really stupid. Or maybe she won't, but she probably will. So we're going to heal her up, but we're also going to pop Marth here. And then we're also going to equip Mercurius for more XP gain. And then we're going to have Chloe pop Sigurd to dive bomb something. She can kill. She might be able to kill this guy. Okay, she can barely not kill him, but we're going to we're gonna put some huge damage on the thief for fun. We're just going to smack this thief for like big damage. Now, if we had a strength booster, she would have lethal there. So that'd be very efficient. And we'll just park her over here. And then we'll have Fram move up, and she's going to Great Sacrifice just to heal 1 HP on Saline so she doesn't get killed. Okay, so this is our opening. Taking a little bit of damage, it's fine. The Axe dudes go after Alir. We heal on the counterattack. So this is making use of enemy and player phase. So I missed that second hit. All right, so she barely survives with one HP. So we've killed that dude. The thief is almost dead. Now what Fram can do is she can move up. Actually, let's do this. Our foes are strong. We can grab space, kill a dude with Mercurius. Then Fram can actually move up and heal both of them. Because of Micaiah. She got a level up from that, so we're getting level ups. We're starting to get some XP funneled while also killing these enemies rapidly. Now, I can kill a lot of different things right now. I can kill this. I can kill these. Uh, so what I'd like to do, let's see if we can kill this with a javelin. And we can. All right, so I'm going to kill this with a javelin. And then move up further. And I'll allow this axe unit to hit me. I'll toggle this axe unit, and then she can heal herself. So she's not going to really be doing too much this turn, aside from healing herself. But this is an example of like a big opening where I'm trying to be as aggressive as possible, get as many kills as possible, take as much space as possible. This is generally how LTCers might play the game. Now, I don't know how they tackle this map in particular, but this is just like an example. So turn efficiency isn't the only thing that would be considered optimal. There's also such a thing as XP efficiency. So in this case, by virtue of how I deployed my units, I've deployed four units on an eight unit map so that those four units can get as much XP as humanly possible. We're also barely tanking here and missing, I'm assuming decent hit rates there. But XP efficiency is something you should think about on any run even if it's not like an LTC or anything like that. Because essentially you always want to feed the units that need it, right? You want the units that you plan on using long term to be getting as much XP as humanly possible so that as you enter the middle and end game, your units have high enough stats to deal with enemies. If you don't do this, you're going to still be able to beat the game. It'll just be much harder. So just by being efficient and optimal, you can funnel XP into the units that you want to run and create what I refer to as super units or units that are so powerful that they can kind of trivialize the game. So being efficient in terms of your XP use does matter and is something you should be concerned with, in my opinion at least. But you can see here I'm power leveling Chloe, Alir. Uh, Saline's just here for the ride just to give me that big opening. 
She's not going to be run long term on this particular playthrough. I'm also feeding Fram, who is going to be run long term. And also, eventually, Anna. I'm not going to train Anna on this map, though. What I'll do is I will just have her do the healing XP farm. Just because it's very efficient. It's very easy to do, easy to set up. Uh, so one thing I want to be mindful of here, if I attack. So she can kill this. She'll take 11 damage. Alright, so here's a compact axe. So I can actually do like a 1-2 punch sort of situation. So need to make sure. Alright, she takes 8. Alright, so she can hit this. Get some XP. Now I would have liked for Saline to be the one that opens, but her speed is low, so she basically dies. <laughs> so I'm going to be feeding Saline here. So this would be throwing out XP efficiency just to secure this Master Seal, in this case. Which I'm fine with, because it's a single enemy, who cares, you know? In the grand scheme of things, a single enemy isn't going to make or break your playthrough. So as long as I'm overall being efficient with my XP, I'm fine with it. Another thing I want to talk about is positional efficiency, or in other words, just good positioning. So I can attack him here, I can attack him here, or I can wrap around while pushing towards where I need to be going anyways and attack this thief in this way. So that way when I attack, I'm closer to where I need to be. And then when Fram heals, I, I got this. she can also advance safely because there's no enemies over there. So now we're moving closer to our end game position, which is going to be around near the center. And we also need to recruit Anna. So there's a few things to consider here. So another type of efficiency is unit efficiency. So how effective a unit is or how good its growths, bases, or personals can be. So in this case, I'm prioritizing training Fram, Anna, Alir, and Chloe on this map. I'm using Saline as needed. She's gonna be dropped long-term. And essentially what I wanna do in my early game is optimize power leveling these units and getting them their equipment, their builds, getting them SP, so I'm trying to optimize them for long-term success individually, like on each short-term map individually, right? So like overall, I'm, you know, beating maps, whatever, funneling XP into these units, but long-term, the effect of doing that will produce crazy powerful units that can easily perform in Maddening. Now on this map, I've done things where I've trained Anna and fed her XP. If you want to just make your life easy, just don't do Jean's Paralog and just have her heal. This is like a somewhat controversial thing because it's like XP farming, but it's the only one I would ever do if I ever do a run just to simplify leveling her up. You just throw Makai on her and have her heal villagers. It's very, very simple, very straightforward. You can funnel kills into her, like you can funnel most of these kills into her to get her to level 7. But it takes more effort than it's worth <laughs> to do it, but you can do it, so... It's something that's possible, but not recommended. Uh, but unit efficiency is essentially how good the units are and also how much investment they require, right? So units that are very efficient are like Pandreo, Kagetsu, to some degree Zelkov. These are units that require little investment on your part and can just pop off immediately. Chloe, she's like kind of like medium investment where she has to be getting all these kills to snowball, but once she snowballs, She's one of the best units in the game. And she uniquely can snowball because she's a hard carry that you get early. And Alir can kind of snowball, but I would say Chloe can snowball a little bit better. Uh, depending on, you know, how many kills you feed both of them. So, for example, Alir is you getting Mercurius kills and is level 10. Chloe does not have Mercurius and is level 12. So this is an example of the disparity between those units. She starts off with much higher speed. So she doubles more consistently and one rounding enemies or really just getting kills, securing kills fast leads to power leveling. So she kind of just power levels herself. So in this way, Chloe is a very efficient unit, whereas Alir, kind of similar to Anna, requires some babying to get up and running. But once you get Anna up and running, she's really strong. And once you get Alir up and running, they're really strong. So that's the unit efficiency aspect of the game. Generally, units that take less work to get up and running are more efficient. And LTCers and people who just want to play optimally will consider this when making a team comp. So to wrap up this efficiency video, let's talk about item and gold efficiency. So this is essentially how you use 
your items. And it might seem somewhat obvious, it might not, depending on how you play the game and how you approach the game. But essentially, if you, for example, invest in a few snowball units and just run fewer than max unit deployment for your combat units at the very least, you won't need to upgrade as many weapons. So you can have efficient items by throwing specific engravings and upgrades on certain items and relying on fewer units. And in, in other words, spending less SP, less gold, and fewer engravings overall. So your engraving economy is up because you have fewer engravings that you need because you have fewer units that are in need of those engravings. Your gold economy benefits because you now have less money being funneled into units, so you can sell more items. You don't have to maintain as many weapons. And in this game, you don't have to fix weapons, but upgrading weapons costs money and resources that are finite. Uh, buying weapons for the units costs you know, resources. Tearing up the weapon, so getting its like individual tiers up from like plus one to plus five, or also just completely reforging it from like steel to silver, for example. All of these things cost a lot of resources, so by running fewer units, you're arguably being more like economically efficient and also more efficient in terms of your engraving pool, like you have fewer engravings being pulled out. Now, if you're running DLC, there's enough engravings to go around, but on base game, there's certainly not enough good engravings for all the weapons you want to run. So it can be efficient just to have fewer combat units and more utilities and just like super powered units that can deal a ton of damage. Now there are, there are pros and cons to doing this. It's not like pure upside essentially, but there, there are definitely situations where it's a huge advantage. Like early to mid game, you can get away with running fewer combat units and just funneling all the XP into those units. So here's an example. So right now this Chloe's power leveled, so I'll stop feeding her and just focus on feeding Alir. And she'll just set up kills and deal damage as needed. And Fram is starting to get XP as well. She just hit level 9. She's almost level 10 already just from being the only healer. Just from healing constantly. So we're doing pretty well so far. But gold efficiency is very important. Right, let's see what we got. I'm going to have to dive that archer. So we'll just wait. Being efficient with money. Knowing when and how to donate. This is an example. So like if you donate poorly... You can waste a lot of money and get little benefit and essentially you have to just lost money or burnt money. If you donate effectively, you can save money while also getting maximum resources for upgrades. So there's all these different ways in which you can min-max a playthrough. And they all matter too. Like each, each particular way or method is important. So it's definitely something to consider when doing a run in this game. Uh, but that's it for efficiency. I just wanted to talk about it. It's something that I think about when doing runs. And yeah, definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this interesting or useful. And I'll see you in the next one.